Hello, mutinous tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Uncharted Waters 2 with Catalina the Pirate and me, Blue Anculo, and the live chat. It's a new live stream. Um, it's a new it's a new stream, so we're just starting off. We've got one ship, which we should probably make sure we can stock up for food and water on our travels. Um, I don't know how much like. It's not too important right now, I don't think, to have spare storage space because we're not doing trades. Um, oh. Right, I forgot just how expensive this ship is to run. That's just full supply. Because we have such a large crew on this ship, we can never sail very far in one voyage. It's like eight or nine days of travel. All right. Our primary goal right now is to sink merchant fleets, get rich. Um, well, and I say sink, what I really mean is capture, because we only have one ship and we can't really fight entire fleets. But we can check with our little thing here, Turkish. So we could go after a Turkish merchant fleet, which is probably a good idea. There's also a Portuguese merchant fleet, it's a bit smaller. And a Portuguese battle fleet. So if we fight the Portuguese merchant fleet, this guy will probably try to defend it, but then we could get all those galleons. So, I like it. I think we go for Turkish, the Turkish fleet first. Also, you can only attack at daytime. But, it's the evening, but we managed to catch him before he, before he, uh, before the night hit. <coughs> Alright, let's get these guys quick and then maybe sail, sell some ships and try to get those other merchant fleets. Stop or we'll attack! We are going to try to go to Alexandria to buy some armor. But uh, for now, there's these juicy targets, so we got to go for them first. So, we only have the one ship. Basically, the only way we can win these combats is by capturing the enemy flagship. The good news is, our ship has so many more crew on it that we can just melee these guys down pretty quickly. Plus, our Captain Red Anilo is very good at these. So, we took three losses, they took 50. Their flagship committed suicide there by attacking us. Cannon damage is fairly mild. There's a reason why we don't have cannons. It doesn't, uh... Well, that ship just committed suicide as well. We probably could kill most of the crew on, um, on all this fleet. Like, because it's a merchant fleet, we probably are strong enough that we could uh, melee down all the ships. It won't work against a war fleet, a battle fleet, but for now, all you really need to do is kill the commander. Or capture his commander's ship. Flagship rang up the red, ran up the red flag. The red anilo destroyed the Turkish fleet. 13,000 gold and a brass candle holder. Seven enemy ships. This is why we have all those captains. So unfortunately when we're doing this, it's a lot of micromanagement because we have to name every single ship. And I'm just going to go sell them all. So let's not mess around. Oh, Carracks are worth a little bit more than Nows. But these are all just trade ships. We don't want them, but it's nice to sell them. So I'm just going to super speed through this part to try to cut down the amount of wasted time. Alright, so then, now that we've captured it, unfortunately this merchant fleet had no uh, goods, no trade goods in their, um, in their uh, hole. So all we're going to do is take one load of food and water and then just ditch it all, all the rest, basically. Help! SOS, save me! Alright, so one quick battle. Let's, uh... Oh! I pressed... I, I forgot that when you when you conquer a fleet like that, you... The crew numbers stay the same, and some of them were killed. So we need to sort of move over some of our crew so that these ships will sail, or else we're just stuck here not being able to move. Um... Something like this. I need a better captain. You can see this guy with his six speed is pretty bad. Uh, anyway, that's good enough. I don't want to do another combat. I know there's lots of ship, lots of fleets around right now, but we need to hobble our way back to a port so we can sell these ships, and then our speed will go back up. <laughs> uh, come on, get to port. 
All right. Oh, this is a bad port too. I, unfortunately, some of these ports are going to be very aggressive. So I should really be careful here. Um, we could have uh, some bad events while we're here that would make me want to reload, basically. So I'm going to just remove all the crew. Um, basically move everyone back onto our flagship. Dismiss anyone that we don't need for the flagship. Sneak into the... I'm just... We're super speeding a lot of this because it's kind of monotonous. But everything that's an AAA is just going to get sold. So the cargo is water. It's worth nothing. We get 14k. So this is how we're making money this time around. We got some gold for winning the battle and like a rare item. But we're getting most of our gold for selling all these extra ships. So 14 grand per ship is a little bit more than one gold bar. So we went from around 32,000 gold to 44,000 gold. Yeah, 43,000 gold. Pretty decent, right? A little bit of pirate fame, a little bit of combat experience for us. Um, we'll continue getting combat level ups by doing that. The closer our sword skill gets to 100, the easier it will be. Uh, what else is there to talk about? That's about it. Oh, uh, because our flagship took some damage while we're in port, we should also repair it. So, standard stuff there. Let's, uh... Let's go find another ship to sink. Uh, Alright. <laughs> the port masters have a don't ask, don't tell policy. Yeah, I mean, they're just my ships. Alright, so that's a Dutch fleet. Now, I'm trying not to make everyone in the world hate me. So, hold on. Let's just have a quick look. Um... If you look at my relationships, I think I've decided that I'm going to try to keep Holland, Italy, and England sort of non-confrontational. Uh, Portugal, Spain, and Turkey will be the bulk of the merchant fleets, so that'll be fine. And then at least we'll have some safe ports with English, England, ha Italy, and Holland, so... That's my plan. Oh, and also, unfortunately, you kind of lose your first mate assignment unless you've got spare... Um, spare uh, mates whenever you like all they all get assigned to ships right basically hey david pool thanks for stopping by and good luck with work all right unfortunately that one fleet that i was looking for disappeared they might have docked or something also of note catalina is not particularly good at sailing herself so we do move a little bit slow here so an italian battle fleet but, like I said, I'm going to try not to get into a fight with Italy. At least for now. But really, winning a battle fleet, getting us uh, big ships, is really good. Oh! <laughs> so, we talked. We had a look at this guy last time. <clears throat> Two hours if I'm still streaming. I might be. We'll see how long this goes. Probably will be. So, Kyar Adin, with a bunch of Venetian galleasses. We could try to fight this guy. <laughs> Portuguese battle fleet. Ooh, there. That's what I want. That's a more likely win. If I can catch up with them, that's good. We're not going to go for Ashid Alim Mahars, whatever the guy's name is. Another Spanish battle fleet. Oh, but it's actually pirates. We could sink that to make friends. Pirates are probably slightly tougher than uh, battle fleets, maybe. I don't know. We're going to go for this guy first. Portuguese battle fleet. We hate the Portuguese. Let's see if we can win an actual combat. Yeah, sorry, Rashid. I will. I am going to have a look. I ha it takes a lot of time, but I will have a look at the percentages and stuff later on. It can't be like a guaranteed way to just make money, but it probably shouldn't be so punishing. All right, so now this time we have to be a little bit more careful. So if we look at their ships, you'll note that they are galleons with more crew. Like they're not like a small merchant ship. Now we're way, like one-on-one, -on -one, we can take any of these ships. It's only a matter of getting surrounded um, in combat. Luckily, on the first turn, we can get adjacent to the enemy flagship. And as long as we can keep these guys tied into combat, we should be fine. And we definitely do not want duels. 
But there we go. We lost 9, they lost 50. I wonder if killing 50 crew is the max you can kill per action. It seems to be pretty reliable. But I really find it hilarious that as soon as you take out the enemy flagship, all the other ships just immediately surrender. Like, even though they should otherwise crush us. Oh, he's trying to get away. He knows he's in trouble. They're all just fleeing. This is a, a Portuguese battle fleet running from one of us. You just got bad luck, Rashid. Yeah, well, I hear you there. Thing is, for chat games, I control the luck. So it doesn't have to be that way. Alright, we're gonna challenge we're not gonna challenge him to a duel. We don't even have any armor. Don't do that. Alright. So there's combat. In the future, I will probably start speeding through these sorts of combats quicker because at least for the moment, this is all we're ever able to do, is just to basically seize the, charge the enemy flagship and try to take, sink them quickly or capture them quickly. And then we steal all their ships. This is probably the most efficient way for your pirating to make money. So we're going to just call it the A. All right, well, let's get the galleons first. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll mix it up this time. We'll get the A, the B, the C. And then, just to really mix it up, the E. Make sure the OCD people are really upset. And then we'll go to F. And then a Carrick, because it's way different, it's two ends. And then that Carrick is like, commas. <laughs> it's so dumb. I wish, I really wish the game auto-named them something, even if it just had stupid names. And then you didn't have to, you could just manually change them at your leisure rather than forced. Anyway, it's fine. That's all we're going to do for that. I admit your victory, but someday my country will avenge my defeat. And then first things first, I got transfer crew. Alright, we'll speed this part up as well. We want to try to get our movement speed up a little bit. Oh, I took off, wow, I had a lot of people die on my, or no, no, I didn't, never mind. I forgot how to count. <clears throat> so galleons take uh, 45 to sail at full speed, I believe. Yeah. As you get more familiar with the different ships, you can kind of remember how many crew everybody needs. Of course, as you become a better captain, you can actually sail with below the minimum requirements and still go at full speed. Which is pretty cool. But yeah, this guy sailing that ship is just not very good at his job. Everybody else is so much faster. Alright, so that'll do for crew assignment. Now we gotta go sell these ships and then hopefully catch another battle fleet here. Let me see... Cesaro is still unassigned, so maybe he's better than this Andreas guy. Yeah, okay, that's good. So that'll bring our total speed from 6 to 8. Or, well, 6 to 7. I still have a lot of people that aren't very good at sailing. Alright. Now, the Blattle Fleet did not attack us, which is probably good. Wow, there's a lot of fleets here. Hey, guys. Just one friendly pirate traveling around. <laughs> Alright, we got some level ups. Antoine, Cesaro... That's helpful. Neutral port means we don't have to worry about the authorities. I suppose this is more like a pirate port. Makes more sense to sell our ships here, right? And again, lots of micromanagement when you're playing pirate. For better or worse, this is what you guys wanted when you asked for Catalina, so here you go. Also, there's a helicopter outside, so if you can hear that, I apologize. Alright. Sell! The A. So, now that we've got Galleons, they should be worth a lot more than Carracks. Yep, more than double. So, much better profit on that quick battle. It wasn't really much more difficult in the long run. And here we are making 30 grand for a ship. 20 grand for a Carrick. 20 grand for a Carrick. Do some repairs quick. And now, we're still level 12. But we've got 64,000 gold. So I don't know how much longer we'll do this for. Um, 
I might do like one more battle fleet and then I want to find some armor. I think what I want to do next is actually go recruit some more crew because our crew kind of sucks. And if we go to the Caribbean, we can get a bunch of new pirates that should be a little bit better. And uh, I'm sure there's some plot. There's there's actually some story for us at some point. But it, it, a, lot of our, a lot of our story is going to be based on our pirate uh, fame. So we need to do a lot of fighting anyway to get level ups, uh, to, get, to get the plot progression. All right, so my plan right now is to head east to try to catch that other battle fleet that got away. Or maybe one of these if they're really interesting. And then we're going to head to Alexandria. I'll need more ships for my fleet ah, at some point. Thing is, we're doing pretty good with just the one ship, and it's much cheaper to operate. But yeah, we, we will increase the size of our combat fleet at some point. Or we'll make bigger ships. I suppose there's this merchant fleet right here that's Portuguese. I don't know. What I'm going to do is save it. I'm going to see if I can catch up with the battle fleet. That, yeah, it's right over there. Because I would rather... If I'm going to do a combat, I would rather take some galleons that's actually pirates. Like, that's great. More combat experience, more value. Come here. Come to blue. Ugu Ali. And he's, you know, you can see, look at his huge level. He actually might put up a good fight with his level 28 combat. If we die here, gate stream over. Nah. <laughs> That's why you put saves down, guys. Pirate Ugo, your luck has run out. So the big problem will be if he challenges us to a duel. <laughs> but if we can just win by melee combat. Oh, look. He's kind of isolated at the back here. This is actually a really good start for us. Because his ships will have to... Um, turn around to get into melee and they depending on the wind they might not be able to plus we still have over double his crew which is so effective oh man this is great he's killing more crew than a lot of the other ship fleets were able to but yeah i think we've got this one in the bag i think i'm gonna try to kind of angle myself away from the bulk of his fleet if i can hey rides oh man work is the worst everyone working all night long. It's all good, though. No worries. Uh-oh. Now, he's managed to pull kind of a cute little maneuver there. It's going to be difficult to turn. Now, I do find... Where's the wind? Uh... Okay, we're... the problem is we're facing directly into the wind. You can see on the little thing above the, the clock there. Uh, the easiest way to catch him is going to be actually not to move. But we can turn like this right now without losing position. And then next turn, hopefully we can catch up. He might just escape, actually. Ah. Yeah, he's got too much distance on us. I think on a straight line, we'd be faster than he is. Because we've got uh, a ship with oars, basically. Like I, I don't think he could escape us in a fair fight. But he managed to rotate away. Ah. Cheater! Look at this, level 32 pirate just flees. But the thing is, in this game, fleeing doesn't really do you any good. Because what's going to stop me from attacking him again almost instantly? Uh, the only thing that can save him is knight or a port. All right, Ulgul Ali, I've had enough of this. <laughs> oh, what rubbish, you're the one doomed to sink. The good news is his crew HP is remains the same. So as soon as we can find his capital ship, like this, it's game over. As long as we don't do a duel. He still might win on a duel. Game over, man. Pirates sunk. So, not a lot of gold. Six ships, though. And yeah, this part. Alright, is there any... They don't have any treasure either. What a sham. But yeah, I don't know if this is as intended or not, but in my experience, the only way to really make money as a, as a pirate yourself is if you do a lot of this kind of single... You, you just pilot one ship, and then you capture 
uh, a big enemy fleet, and then you sell those ships. Because if you just... If you just, uh... If you try to do pirating with a big fleet yourself, and you don't get much loot, you know? You capture a tiny little bit of gold, tiny little bit of goods. You just lose money on crew upkeep, actually. It's kind of weird. Like, actual full-time pirating is very expensive in this game. Anyway, that's as much, much speed as we're going to get for now. We're just going to limp back to uh, the name, whatever the name of this port is, very slowly. I figured out how to move diagonally, too, guys. Uh, the last couple Uncharted Water streams, I was complaining that I couldn't set my sails diagonal, but I know how now. <clears throat> it's just the emulator problem. It didn't emulate diagonals on my gamepad automatically. It was weird. You have to set them up as down and left at the same time, for instance. Usually, they just figure that out, but... So it's kind of nice to be able to move around a little bit more uh, efficiently on the ocean now. All right, so same as before, uh, same as every time, basically. That's the trouble. It is, it is, unfortunately, basically the same loop. Once you get the hang of early game combat, it's not going to change much. So it probably will be more interesting if I kind of rush towards getting some good crew and getting them some permanent ships so that at least combat will be more interesting just for the people watching and rather than just having these 400 crew mega battleships uh, I might try to make a better more balanced like uh, ships that have like cannons and stuff that are more interesting um, and do some cannon battles but they are I would say inefficient like that's making a fleet of cannon ships uh, now you have to keep track of your gunpowder, which is another item you have to buy and upkeep and, you know, spend when you fire. And if you do large fleet cannon actions, you're going to take more hull damage, which you have to repair. Uh, it's just, it takes a lot longer, but I think it'll be nice to mix things up. So we'll be doing stuff like that. Anyway, another stash of food. All right, now I thought one of these fleets I was also interested in Portugal, Portuguese merchant fleet we could go for. Or a British merchant fleet. Okay, we're not attacking the British at the moment, except if they're pirates. Man, I love fighting pirates. I don't know, like, I know I'm a pirate, so you might think there's some pirate code. There's no pirate code. It's more of a general guideline. John Davies. Now, apparently, there is also a feature in this game where defeated captains get sort of added to the uh, recruit pool. So, for instance, if we beat John Davies, it's possible we could actually get him to join our crew later on. If that's the kind of thing you want. Alright, so now that I've talked about combat a lot, what way is the wind blowing first? Do sell. Okay, so I feel like the best course of action is to get kind of in front of him a little bit so he can't just immediately sail south in the wind, like with the wind behind him. So it kind of blocked off his escape route a little bit there. And let's just speed up the enemy ships. Yeah, so you can see he tried to move south, but we're kind of in his way. I don't think the AI is very smart. They're not clever enough to like sail around you. And that's it. He attacked me and that's it. Another easy win. All right, a tiny bit of gold, a bunch of ships. You've seen this before. High quality Let's Play entertainment here. I wish these battles were a little bit more um, dangerous or exciting, but this is what we get. Alright. I shouldn't have under underestimated you, pal. Yeah, we were way too strong for this guy. Alright, transfer crew again. Let's try to speed this one up as well. Once you've assigned crew once, you've assigned crew if enough. This guy just sucks, so yeah, okay. No need to optimize too much your movement speed when you only have to travel like a day away. But look how much slower we are with the with the new with the new with the extra ships, right? Like this is ridiculously slow movement because our our spare mates are really bad at sailing those galleons. Like I said we were like a day away from this port. It still took us like two or three days to get to Syracuse. So anyway, just kind of interesting. 
there are some complicated, like, movement speed formulas. Clearly, 10 on the rogue is different than 7 on a galleon with a bad captain or 6 on a galleon. Because, like, we were slowed down, I would say, more than half our normal speed there. Alright. I guess if I don't join that mutiny, we're never going to get a good mutiny. <laughs> we need two more people in chat with a little bit of points. Fell is trying really hard to mutiny. <laughs> All right. Get rid of that ship. Get rid of that. Nope, don't sell my flagship. All right. But how, how could you dare mutiny against this gorgeous redhead? 18 years old, loyal to piracy, amazing sword skills, halfway decent navigation skills. Actually, not that bad, to be honest. Just needs some more level ups. All right. Uh, okay, continue. We're going to go to Alexandria, I think. I'm going to take a break from sinking merchant fleets, unless we see something really juicy. And we're going to try to get to Alexandria. I mean, we're on the right direction, but, uh... Oh, but is it a good sh It could be something juicy. Turkish merchants? But they're actually pirates! Oh, I, well, you know, it's on the way, right? Look how fast we are when we're not escorting all these terrible ships. All right, Lewis Scott. Mr. Pirate. <laughs> Your luck has run out! I'm a greedy Ankylo, and I'm coming for you. What rubbish! Alright, now this time, for the first time, their flagship is actually inaccessible on turn one. So let's just turn our, our uh, hull a little bit, see what happens here. Good! Give me a nice little path to the flagship. Alright, so if I can go like this work my way over. Oh, he still managed to sail behind me. But there's there's no flanking bonuses as far as I'm aware. Uh, we're in kind of a bad position. If, if he tries to flee, he's probably going to be able to get out of here. So we need to not sail away, but to try to change our uh, bearing north. There. So we turned a little bit. Just doing some parallel parking here. Good, he didn't run away. I was a little bit worried that he would try to flee there. So we got it. Another victory against the pirates. 5,100 gold. We're probably paying more than that in food for our crew just to do this travel. But at least we get all these ships, right? I actually think pirating should be more profitable, um, not counting the captured ships. Because if you have a full fleet, like if you have 10 combat ships, you can't capture anything because 10's the max. And uh, he actually gives us more money in food than you capture in terms of like, uh, like gold or, or goods or anything. It's kind of annoying. This is why I play the way I play with you know, capturing full fleets and then selling all the ships. Hey, Tonic. Welcome to the stream. Alright, everyone's at as fast as they can sail, basically. Well, I say that. We still have a, a little ways to go to get to Alexandria. I'm going to reassign this guy again because he sucks. I don't like this guy. I, should... I can't. I don't even know if I can get rid of him because he's like a plot character. But he's really bad at uh, at uh, sailing. Andreas. Yeah, Cesaro is at least two points better. And then Patrick still kind of like. I wish I had better captains. This is why you don't like multiplayer games. I'm sorry, fella. <laughs> like I said, I can do some tweaking on the stats later on so they're more accessible. We just don't have a huge chat audience. 
If you sit near the coast of Africa, you can find full fleets of goodies. Well, we'll get there. Um, I, I've played this before, and I do find that sinking enemy fleets, like even merchant fleets, don't guaranteed have trade goods on them. So, unfortunately... Oh good, we can go to a village! <laughs> we'll probably just get eaten by a crocodile. But let's do this while we're on our way over, right? But yeah, I, I I have had very poor success making money off of piracy other than selling ships. But maybe that's my own bad. We discovered... The Rosetta Stone. Alright, it doesn't really matter. We're not into the discovery game, but seeing as a village just popped right in front of us, right? Alright, good job, George. Get better. Allied with Turkey. That's not good. We might get kicked out. Can you pillage ports? No, unfortunately, it's not like Sid Meier's Pirates. You can... I guess we could... We could have, uh, plundered the village. I could have tried that. I'm pretty sure that just gets you food, though. But we, we can test that out. So the reason we came to Alexandria... I'm going to put a save down in case we get robbed here. But uh, we came here to try to buy some armor. Specifically. Hey, it's a half plate. Can Blue, can you pillage the village? Alright, four grand. Now we at least have some armor and a sword. Our pirating career has increased. We'll buy some rat poison. Because we're probably... What I want to do now pretty soon is ditch a lot of my crew and travel to the Caribbean and try to recruit some new some new pirates with just with less crew on my ship though uh and I've got all these ships in tow so I'm gonna sell them I think what I'll try to do is pirate my way over to Portugal Spain like Iberia and then ditch my crew there and sail across to the uh the new world Oh, and before we do this standard thing, I'm I'm not giving up on my crew just yet. I still want to do a little bit more pirating. Ooh, our um our main character has gone from 10 to 11 on travel speed. That's actually quite nice. That means we can cross the uh, the ocean a little bit quicker. Not enough crew. You guys are not mutinying very well. Uh, okay, that's done. Sell. 30 grand. 20 grand. 20 grand. 20 grand. 30 grand. 15 grand. And then repair. 120 gold repairs. Pretty cheap. Hey, Papa Zillion. You didn't print enough pamphlets for the, <laughs> for the mutiny. <laughs> yep. We got a rebellion to get started. Gotta tailor these chat games to the to the the on-screen game more more properly in the future. All right, so have a quick recap here. Red Annie Low level 13. We're continuing to get combat level ups. Uh, that's pretty good. I should really play. Oh, not again! Another one of these people. Uh, I've already played Might Magic Six twice and Might Magic Seven one more time than necessary. <laughs> If I got a dollar for every time someone suggested I play Might Magic 6 always, I would probably have... Like, realistically, I'd probably have a thousand dollars. It's not much, but... <laughs> Twenty dollars. No, no, I've had that... that that's that been... That's a... If there's ever an FAQ that I make, a frequently asked question, it's definitely to keep replaying the game that I want you to play. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed Papa Zillion. I'm... I'm only salty because I get asked the same question too much. I, I'm glad that people enjoyed the series. Like, I, I really am. I just... I'm not a one-game channel. Alright. We actually have a million gold. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How come I didn't notice this? Your, flate, your fate is to play Might Magic 6 every single stream for the rest of your life. Honestly, that would be hell. Like, I like it and all, but just play the same game forever would be literal torture after not very long. Like, there's only so much you can do. So, what I wanted to say there. We have 106 gold bars. 
at 10,000 gold per bar. That's 1 million gold. So we're pretty rich. <laughs> we're also pretty famous for piracy. We doubled our pirate rank since we started here. Yeah, speedrunning, that's that was always what got me. Like, I... I, I kind of, I like watching speedrunners, and there are some games that I could see myself also speedrunning myself. But I don't know how I could play it and frequently enough to actually get fast. Like, that's, it would suck the fun right out of the game for me. Like, Alright, we gotta get out of this terrible music city. It's got the same three notes on repeat. Oh, we've already bought the food. Let's get out there. Okay, so my plan, like I was trying to say, is one or two more um, piracy attacks, one or two more combats on the way over. Once we get to the coast of Africa, the West Africa coast, give or take, we're going to sail across the Atlantic and we're going to not bring our crew, the 400 crew, because that's too much. We, we actually won't, won't have enough food to get across the Atlantic with so many people. A Portuguese battle fleet that's actually pirates? Well, perfect. What about this one that's coming closer? Turkish battle fleet. We could go for that. Zebics are less valuable though. They're kind of like galleons, but not quite as good. Coming for you, pirates. All right, we caught up. Thanks to my diagonal skills. And then as soon as it's daytime, we attack. Sorry, fella, it's my ship now. Ooh, this guy's got pretty good levels. But we actually have weapons and armor. If we get forced into a duel, we might have a chance. But I really dislike the duel system in this game. I should show it off, I know, so you guys can see, but... Ugh. So hopefully we start near the flagship. Not close enough. All right, so let's do some maneuvers. Maybe he'll come to us. Oh, he's gonna shoot at us. All right, he actually did a lot of damage there. That was like 13 hull damage with one shot. Okay, we still took like 16 damage for killing 50 enemies. That's fine. The trick is still to get melee damage, boarding damage on the flagship without dueling. All right, we took 20 damage, he took 50. He's uh, committing to sinking us though. We might be in trouble. I should stop fast forwarding because we might have some problems here. It's gonna take a couple more turns to kill his crew. Our crew's fine, but our hull is starting to take some damage. Oh, come on, no. <laughs> this is the worst. So, the way it's supposed to work is that if you've got a larger crew, your crew can block his attempts at dueling. And if you have a smaller crew, you generally can't engage in a duel. So, I had a larger um, crew at the point, but he still forced a duel anyway. So, this is really bad. He's a very high-level pirate, and he's got um, really good weapons, actually. Let me just look up what the Blue Crescent does. Because this actually will help me have any chance at all. A star rating sword, which is way better than a B rating. And it is specifically good at striking. Striking is one of the rock, paper, scissors. And then plate armor is, of course, an A rank. And it's better than what I've got. So, he's got better armor and a way better weapon. My broadsword is what kind of... Is mine... Mine is also striking, so we both have striking style weapons. Uh, I forget I forget how the rock, paper, scissor works though. Let me see. Uh, there's thrust, slash, and strike. And then there are parry, dodge, or block, but they are basically the same. Because a death is a game over, I'm going to put a separate save slot here because we're probably going to die. And I'll probably want to either retry the duel or not engage in this ship action. Um, so he's getting first strike. Rock, paper, scissor card games. Oh yeah, the number by the card is the power of the move. So, strike. I'm trying to remember how you stop a strike. 
A thrust is beaten by a parry, I believe. And then there's a lash and a strike. I believe you block the lash and dodge the strike. I think, but we'll see. So he striked, I took zero damage, so I did correctly. If you pick the correct um, defense, then the power of the defense doesn't matter. Uh, but if you fail the defense, then the higher number gives you some defense. Our weapon is also better at striking, but I have a very bad strike power. So I'm going to try a thrust, because I've got a strong thrust. Now, if he parries it, we'll do nothing. He parried it, we did nothing. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors for the win. We'll just try to dodge again. I'm assuming he'll stick with his strikes, because he's really good with strikes. Yeah, eight power strike. All right. Let's try a lash this time. He picked the wrong one. So lash beats dodge. Uh, he picked a dodge, right? Yeah, stri you dodge a strike. You block a lash. Man, we're winning now. The better your stats are, the more damage you do when you win, basically. Or the more damage you take. Uh, I'm going to stick with dodging, because I think the AI likes to prioritize their weapon's advantage. But he could do something other than strike. It's just, he seems to only pick S's, because he knows that's what he's good at. Also, I'm good with S's, and I've got a strong S. Come on! Of course he dodged. Alright, I'm just going to stick with these. Ah, oh, he got me. He tricked me. He went the thrust. He did, like, half my health and damage. Ah, we're, lo we're doomed now. Thrust. Oh, I managed a little hit. Now, if this goes on for enough turns, I think ten turns, um, it's a draw. Alright, well, last time he thrusted, now he's gonna try- Now he's gonna trick me and he's going back to a strike, right? Yeah, see? called his bluff. Okay, come on, Lash. Get him. Man, this guy always knows what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna keep trying to dodge. I'm pretty sure the game will always give you one of each move. But you can see, if you stick with using the large number cards, eventually you just end up with a bunch of ones. So that's kind of the, inevitab the inevitability. You get one new card per turn, replacing what you've spent. Come on, Lash. Good. Lash beats Dodge. We've got a bit of a victory going on. Uh, I'm going to try another Dodge. Ah, he got me. Luckily, his Thrust only does minimum damage. Come on, I really need a big powerful strike to hit. Nope. He uh, correctly identifies my move 90% of the time. Well, I think we're going to lose here. If I can't hit him, we're basically dead. Oh, look at that! Nine turns. We just need to survive a couple more turns. I'm going to just pick a big number here to parry. Try to keep me alive. I actually got lucky and picked the right one. Come on, big lash. Big lash. I need it. You, you blocked my lash. Well, we're out of big numbers. Last attack. If he goes for a strike, this will keep me alive. The nine strike would have killed me if I picked anything else. And uh, our final attack, I believe, I'll go for my own strike. And he dodged it, of course. So there you go. Duels, guys. Isn't it the best? Now, if they... <laughs> if they do too many more cannon hits, we're going to just be sunk anyway. <coughs> Ship combat. I sure hope this wins us the fight. No duels. Oh, we need one more round of combat with him. Oh, he ran away, the jerk! If his if his allies... Uh, they might be in flea... They're in flea mode. As soon as the flagship got below, like, 50 health, they just switched to escape mode. They're not actually trying to attack me. And I'm facing the right direction, so we got this. It's probably safer... No, no, we're gonna just kill him right here. 
But I want to head him off anyway. Um, this is it. As long as I don't accidentally start a duel that I lose. There you go, guys. I survived our first duel. <laughs> Somehow. And for all of that trouble against a very, very high level pirate, 3,000 gold. That's it, 3,000 gold. Hope you're happy. Bunch of galleons. I think he should have had more treasure, or like a treasure map. That would be fine. Like, if you got a treasure map off of famous pirates, and then the treasure map took you to like 100,000 gold kind of value, that would probably do it. Thanks, Jelka. I'd like to say I really uh, strategized it out, but it just came down to random, uh, random um, rock, paper, scissor AI duels, which is still terrible. But the only reason we had any chance was because we bought that armor. If we hadn't had the plate mail or the half plate, we would definitely have died because we would have taken way more damage. All right. No, I shouldn't have under underestimated you, pal. Just glad I didn't have to save scum through it. Alright. Well, our ship has seen better days, to be fair. But, we are alive. Your monster hunter understands. <laughs> That's what I need to add in, solo hunts, into the stream labs, into the stream chat. Scale it differently for solo hunts. Alright, now my movement speed's really bad. I can fix that by temporarily putting everyone on navigation. That's fine. We are really low on crew right now. Let's just go to Athens. If we can get in there. Come on, ship. <laughs> Man, my crew is so bad at sailing. Make them more lucrative. Hmm. It's still one person that wins the... Well, the hunts... Okay, I'll take... You know, okay. What I'll do, I've got a plan. We're going to end the episode here, because once I sell these ships, we're going to put a little cut. And then next recording episode, we're going to travel to uh, to the New World. I'm going to actually just ditch my crew right now. So, I don't need uh, 400 crew to get across the, uh, the Caribbean. So, what I'm going to do is take... Uh, 60, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll bring a couple spares. We'll bring, like, a full hundred. But we're not gonna go for combat. And everybody else is getting dismissed. So we're gonna sell our new ships. Goodbye. 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 We're gonna repair this ship, because we took a lot of damage. 1,000 golden repairs is one of... Actually, hold on. I want to see how close we were to death before we do that. Notifications lied. Sorry, Faith. Uh, if we look at our ship, all those cannons... This is the first time we've actually taken significant hull damage. We're at 31 out of 73. So, you might want to consider building a ship with 100 hull strength at some point. So that this is less of an issue. Anyway. Point is, we didn't die. And we can repair. All right, um, because it's not super expensive, we're going to, I mean, I've got enough money. We're going to temporarily drop the bunk space down a bit and uh, just make sure we have enough food to uh, get across the Atlantic safely. Still no guns, though. All right. And uh, yeah, so for future tubers, we're going to end this episode here. Um, not much to say other than... We did lots of combat. We got some levels up, I'm sure. We're, well, we're not quite level 14 yet, but we're getting up there. Now we need some navigation levels, because, you know, we need navigation. And 28,000 pirate fame. Generally, 40,000 is the benchmark for endgame. So we're already almost two-thirds of the way to the end of how much pirate fame we need, which is pretty crazy, really. But yeah, we fought some pretty high-level pirates, so good fame, reasonable gold income, over a million gold. We're pretty solid. We're set pretty well right now. We just need... Well, I want better captains. Because some of these guys are really bad at sailing. So I want to replace them. Alright. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And I will see you next time.